Uh, we're going to take a break from our series in Romans, and we're going to take the next two weeks uh, to talk about to talk about giving. To talk about giving, the truth of the matter is, is talking about and wrapping our minds around biblical giving, sacrificial giving, cheerful giving, is something that isn't quite natural for us. If you don't believe me, then go downstairs and view our two and three year old classroom downstairs and see if you see a two year old go up to another three year old or two year old and say, Hey, I'd like for you to have this toy. I saw that you were over here by yourself. Of course, they can't talk, but I'm hypothetically saying, like, they don't think that in their minds. Like, I would love to share this toy with you. It's not natural for us to want to give. You know, it's not natural for any person to want to give. And the way that God's word has commanded us to give is to not just give, but to give cheerfully, to give with a happy heart, and to give to give God the glory. You know, giving cheerfully and giving the way that God has commanded us to give isn't something that comes natural to anyone. Giving and giving the way that God challenges us to give is a grace all in itself. The cheerful giver is the one whose heart has been changed by God. Let me say a couple of things about a cheerful giver. And I want you to think about your own life. I want you to think about your own family. I want you to think about the giving that you have in your life. And here's a couple of things about a cheerful giver. First of all, a cheerful giver always wishes that they could give more. A cheerful giver always wishes that they could give more. A cheerful giver also doesn't look at a situation, doesn't look at the church offering or giving to a family in need or volunteering their time and say, I would like to give the most minimum amount of resources or time or energy that I can. A cheerful giver says, I want to give all that I can, and I want to give sacrificially. But you may say, well, um, I, I would love to do that in my life, but I, I, I just don't know how. I want to tell you today that you're not going to be able to give that way unless you're a believer, unless you are born again. And today we're going to be looking at an example in Scripture of this type of unnatural giving, an unnatural want to give and to give sacrificially. And specifically today, Paul is going to be writing in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 2 through 3, about a group of Christians in Macedonia, Macedonia, of how they gave so generously back to the Jerusalem church, a group of believers who were very, uh, very much struggling. I'm not going to go into all the details of that, but understanding that this is a model for giving. No matter what it is in our lives, looking at giving from the aspect through the lens of Scripture and seeing how we are called to give in our lives. I want to read to you 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 2 through 3. And this is going to be our model for giving as we look at giving during the Christmas season back to the Lord's church. Listen to what it says. It says, For in, severe, in a severe test of affliction, their abundance of joy and their extreme poverty have overflowed in a wealth of generosity on their part. For they gave according to their means, as I can testify, and beyond their means of their own accord. I'm going to stop there. There are some great lessons that we can learn from the Christians here in Macedonia that Paul is referring, referring to. First of all, you have to understand that this church was under some very difficult circumstances. They were under heavy affliction and deep poverty. But these circumstances didn't keep them from giving in an amazing way. I want to stop for a second. I just want to say to you, the church in America in 2022, almost 2023, is we don't know affliction. Of course, we live in a postmodern culture where the culture is pushing a sinful agenda more and more. But we get to come in and worship freely. We have a, a beautiful building that God has blessed us with. We have so many luxuries. And you know, we get to sit here and listen to these incredible instruments. And we get to sit in this nice warm building and a nice padded seat. We get to even take our kids downstairs so they don't bother us during the service. Let's be honest. We have a lot of comfort. We have a lot of comfort in our lives. 
But what we've seen since, and I, I hate to use the word COVID anymore, but post-COVID, as we have seen so many people fall away from the church, so many people fall away from the grace of giving, so many people fall away from their first and true love, the Lord Jesus Christ. That is the great affliction that we see in the church in 2022. These Christians that Paul mentions here didn't allow their circumstances to keep them from the grace of giving. In fact, it says that they gave in abundance. Abundance here in the context simply means a surplus to continue the work of the Lord's church and to advance God's kingdom. They gave out of great affliction and they also gave in great abundance. And here's my prayer for you. Here's my prayer for myself. Here's my prayer for the Lord's church is that we would learn from this model of giving. Because the reality is, is many people, including myself at times, give very minimally. And the frequency of our giving is few and far between. I'm not just talking about money. I'm not just talking about to the Lord's church when it comes to finances. I'm talking about our commitment of our time, the commitment of our talents, and the commitment of our resources. But from the Macedonian believers, giving was done with an abundance of joy from their extreme poverty and overflowed in a wealth of generosity. I want to step back from that. I just want to say, isn't that beautiful? Isn't that beautiful to think that in great poverty, they gave in such an amazing, amazing way. Their sincere hearts to the Lord were made apparent by their sacrificial giving when they didn't have much to give at all. And if that's not enough, I want to highlight to you three major takeaways from this text today. First of all, I want you to see that these Christians, the, the Macedonian believers, number one today is that they gave according to their means. They gave according to their means. If so many people in the church are married to the biblical tithe, and I think that the tithe is a great starting point for many of us, but I also want to tell you, and we'll talk about this more next week in the sermon next week and looking at understanding tithing, but also understanding that there is a different charge in the New Testament for giving. So for some people, the tithe is an unrealistic goal. Because for many people, it is their means, they don't have enough. They don't have enough to give 10%. And here's the flip side of that coin. There are so many people who could give way more than they actually give because they think that if they stop at the 10%, then that's kind of the minimum amount of what they're supposed to give. And it limits them to give sacrificially and cheerfully. The New Testament charge for giving is actually very clear. It is for one to decide in their own hearts what to give and to give cheerfully. We will look more at that passage next week. But we give to the Lord based on what we have, what God has blessed us with. You know, I have no idea what your means are. Again, you have no idea what my means are. You don't have a view into my bank account or you don't see the minutes and the hours that I have in my week every week. And I don't see the time that you spend every week. I, I don't know your means. You don't know my means, but God knows our means. God understands and God sees everything that we have. And the question that we must, must face is, is are we giving according to our means? Let me break it down a little further. Meaning, are you blessed with much but not giving much? Or are you living on little and using that as an excuse to not give at all? Giving should be proportionate to what we have. We all have different means and our giving should come from the means that God has blessed us with. Next, I want you to see that the Christians here in Macedonia, that they gave beyond their means. Number two today is they gave beyond their means. This is radical living and radical giving. This type of giving is sacrificial giving. 
I love it said this way in my study Bible. It says, God's people are to give according to what they have, yet it must be in proportions that are sacrificial. I'll read that to you again. God's people are to give according to what they have, yet it must be in proportions that are sacrificial. I think it would be safe to say, and I'm talking about myself here, just as much as I'm reflecting upon your life as well, is there are many times in our lives when it comes to the church, when it comes to our daily lives, that we are not giving sacrificially. And I'm not just talking about our money. I'm talking about every aspect of our lives, our time, our resources, our abilities, our gifts, the means that God has given us. We often hoard those means and try and keep them all for ourselves. I want to direct you to the gospel of Mark chapter 12, verses 41 through 43. Listen to this. It says, and he sat down opposite the treasury and watched the people putting money into the offering box. Many rich people put in large sums, and a poor widow came and put in two small copper coins, which makes a penny. And he called his disciples and to him and said to them, Truly I say to you that this poor widow has put in more than all those who are contributing to the offering box. For they all contributed out of their abundance, but she out of her poverty has put in everything she had, all she had to live on sacrificial giving, giving with a pure heart for the right reasons. And the reasons that we give is all to the glory of God. I want to stop for just a second. And I want to address the people in the room today. I want to talk to you for just a moment. Those here in the room today, maybe even those listening online, who would consider themselves a sacrificial giver of your time, your talent, and your resources. And here is a line that I know that you would affirm. Here's a line that I know that you would agree with. And it's this simple line. You can't outgive God. You cannot outgive God. And I know that in my life, in the times where I have given sacrificially of my time, my talent, my resources, I look at those situations and I I come to the table of giving to the Lord's church or I, I come to a situation in my life and my heart is just so overflowing with thanksgiving, so overflowing with generosity because I know that everything that I have is because God has graciously given it to me. You may say, well, I went to school for 12 years to get the degree that I have. I built my business from the ground up. I worked hard to work my way up in the company. Or I just work hard every day for a minimum wage job and and I don't have very much. Who gave you the ability to work? Who gave you the breath in your lungs? Who gave you the talents and the resources and the abilities and the mind and the know-how? This is all a grace from God. And it is a grace to be able to give because everything that we have is from him anyways. You cannot outgive God. I cannot outgive God. Thirdly, I want you to see that these Christians gave on their own accord. And I'm not talking, we're not talking about a Honda. We're talking about a different type of accord. What does this mean? What is it talking about here? It means that they gave because they wanted to give. Very simple. They gave because they wanted to give. And specifically here, for these Christians, they gave sacrificially. And they gave outside of their means. No one twisted their arms. No televangelist promised that he would send them holy water to heal their afflictions. And they gave that's a joke. You can laugh at that. It doesn't really, that's, that's not true. We don't want to do that. Not true. They didn't give because they, 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 they felt obligated. They didn't give back to the, the, the church in Jerusalem because they felt like they had to. They gave because they wanted to. They gave on their own accord. 
No one promised them anything in return. No one made them give. And Paul is showing us here that their sacrificial giving of giving within their means and outside of their means and giving sacrificially is the same type of attitude that you and I are to have when it comes to not only giving back to the Lord's church, but living our lives for the Lord Jesus Christ every day. Giving should always be done willingly and lovingly. We don't give because we feel like we have to. And if you give because you feel like you have to, then don't give, don't give. Because if you're not giving with a cheerful heart, the scripture tells us that God loves a cheerful heart. So if it's not from a cheerful heart, then God doesn't love it. God's not gonna bless it. God's not gonna, gonna do anything in your life in an amazing way. And I'm not talking about dollar for dollar. I'm not talking about time for time. I'm talking about being obedient and seeing that you and me, it is a grace that we are even able to give. We may be sitting there and thinking to yourself, well, what in the world does that mean for me today? Well, I hope that you understand that it means a lot because we are all called to give. Again, giving does not come naturally for the sinner. We have to be born again. We have to possess the spirit of, of God in our lives, God, the Holy Spirit, to prompt us and to change that, that heart of, of stone into a heart of flesh that, that now views the world and, and views the local church as the most important thing that there is. And I wanna encourage you today in thinking about some things with us as we come to a close of 2022 here at City Soul Ministries. Let me tell you about some specific things focused in here at our church. We've zoomed out and we've looked at the biblical perspective of giving and specifically the Macedonians and how they gave sacrificially. Now we wanna focus in on the church that God has blessed us with here. And I wanna share some different things with you. Last week, we kicked off our year in giving campaign here at City Soul Ministries. And it has been our tradition since 2009, when this church was, uh, when this church started, for the whole month of December to call us all to a one-time sacrificial year-end gift back to the Lord's church. And I wanna, I wanna tell you why that's important. I wanna tell you some things about our church specifically here. First of all, if you follow along each week in our bulletin or you, you watch online, um, you can see that our weekly budget is there. And if you do the math, you can see that our total budget for the whole year is about $250,000. And for some of you, like, Man, that's a lot of money. Well, actually, that's not. <laughs> because we can run this church and do all of the things that we do on $250,000. $250,000 a year is roughly what it takes for City Soul Ministries to continue to run as it is. Let me break it down for you. We are blessed with this building, with this building. Some of you are new, some of you may be visiting today, but you know, I think it's important that we understand you know, where we are and looking at our, our, our church property. Um, we purchased this property about eight or nine years ago. We began renting this property from the church that was here before us. And uh, they came to us with a, a great offer and said, we would love for you to be able to buy this property. You know, we would love for you to be able to stay and not have to go somewhere else or start somewhere else again. And we originally purchased this property for $620,000. And I wanna tell you what our church property consists of. We have about roughly two acres here. Um, obviously the parking lots and a little sliver of grass down here. We do not have the storage units down there. Those aren't the churches. Somebody's bought that and put that in recently. But the church property consists of all that you see just kind of around with the parking lot and of course the building. And then we also have the house next door here that is a part of the, the church property. So we originally purchased it for 620,000 and that is what our property consists of. I will tell you that it is a blessing to have this building, uh, to be a church plant and to start in a place and stay in a place is absolutely unheard of. Um, it is absolutely unheard of. Most, most church plants have to bounce around to different places 
And every time you bounce around, you lose people because you go to a different location and people are so fickle. You know, they come and go anyways. And it's so hard to, to maintain a church plant because if you're moving here and moving there and everywhere, people just kind of get, uh, get uh, frustrated with that. And we have been blessed to be able to be here since the beginning. So we have faithfully, um, every month as a church, put in our budget a $3,600 a month payment upon this property. And as the years have gone on, now we owe in the low 400s on this property. That's fantastic that we've paid it down and that's where we are. I said last year that it would be absolutely amazing. It would be a, an incredible grace of God for this property to be paid off here in the next couple of years. As you know, owning a home, there's a lot of expense with that. You know, maintaining air conditioners and furnaces, utilities, all of these things don't change. And those are built into our budget of $250,000 for the year. But you look around, you may say, well, who's the staff? I don't really know who all staff here. Let me tell you, we have four staff here at this church. Myself, of course, you, know, you see me every Sunday. Um, Andrew Prather, who um, kind of oversees a lot of different things here at the church as far as all the tech stuff. Um, he's our building nerd. He does everything that you see as far as all of this. And I say that in a nice way. He's the coolest nerd I've ever met in my life. Um, he is. Like, literally, he's the cool, like, you know, he's, we, we became really good friends. We, we spend a lot of time together here. And so he's on staff here. Um, his wife, Emily, has been on staff here at this church since 2011. And she oversees our children's program downstairs. Um, Emily is wonderful. She has a great heart for your kids. She loves our kids. And she pours the gospel into them weekly. And then Becca, who leads our music on Sunday mornings. Uh, Becca and her family, Brad, and uh, their two children have been a part of this church uh, basically since we started. They started coming right after we launched the church. And Becca leads our music, and uh, she's one of those people who just does a lot as well. And they are wonderful. I mean, they are absolutely wonderful. And then you look at like people in the praise band, all these volunteers who give all of their time and their effort and their resources. But I will tell you that who God has brought to this church as far as the staff, the volunteers, you know, even our, our main elders who preach like Dan and Jerry, and I could just start naming all of these people who do so much for the Lord's church here. It makes my life so much easier. You know, um, think about where, who, the people you work with at your job. If they were not nice people or they were hard to get along with, it makes your job a whole lot harder. And these people that God has brought here and and kept here for many years has been a huge blessing. But I, I will say that that staff that is here is worth more than what we're able to pay them. And I would love to see our year-end offering this year bring in an amount that we can give that staff a little bit more of a raise and show them how much we care for them, how much we love them, and how much we don't want them to have to leave and go somewhere else or move away because they can't support their families based upon what we're able to pay. A growing church has a financial need. And what we want to do is we want to give you the opportunity to give a year in sacrificial gift back to the Lord's church. Will we bring in enough to pay off our property and hire another staff person and give our staff a, a decent raise? That'd be awesome. I don't want to limit God. But I just wanted to lay those numbers out there for you to just kind of show you it takes that much a year. Here's our building. And then you can do the math as far as everything else that's kind of going on here. You can see it. A growing church has a financial appetite. So from now until the end of the year, we want to give you an opportunity to give a one-time year in gift back to the Lord's church. And we're calling this this year the grace of giving because giving is a grace. It's a grace of God. Because again, all that you have, the reason that you have what you have is because God has given it to you in the first place. But here's the bigger question. Here's the bigger thing that I want you to see today. It's not about dollars. It's not about cents. Yes, we have to have money to maintain and to continue to do what we're doing. But here's what I want you to see. Here's what I want you to hear. And the question is, is why, why do we give? Why do we give? Well, the answer is very, it's a very Sunday school answer. It's a very simple answer. It's because Jesus gave it all for us. As Paul goes on to say in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9, I want to read it to you. 
in closing. He says, for you know that grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake, he became poor. He came poor. So that you by his poverty might become rich. I don't know about you, but that's the type of rich that I want in my life. Yes, I have to have money to maintain my household and pay for my home and put gas in my car and take care of my kids. And yes, you do as well. But stepping back from all of the the day-to-day things that you have in your life, stepping back from all of the hustle and the bustle of building a business and eight to five or 10 to seven or whatever your days are, working the night shift, whatever you do, everything that you have is a grace of God. And this is the type of rich that I want for my life and the type of rich that I want for you is to be forgiven, is to be spiritually made alive by faith in Christ. Because of Jesus' sacrifice, because he left his place of honor in heaven, that he was born of the Virgin Mary by the power of the Holy Spirit, that he lived a perfect life, a sinless life, a blameless life, that he went to the cross willingly disregarding its shame, that he became poor for our benefit, that he went to the cross, that all of the sins of all of God's people whom would ever believe were laid upon him upon that cross. And by our faith and our faith alone and what Christ has done for us is that we can become rich, spiritually rich, Because of Jesus' sacrifice, we gain forgiveness. We gain heaven. We gain things like Becca was talking about earlier, joy, peace, love, gratitude, and the list goes on. This is the message of Christmas. This is the message of Advent, is that Emmanuel, God with us, that he was born live the life that you can never live, laid down his life for you. And shifting gears as we come to a close today, that's the most important thing. The Lord will build his church. He made us that promise. He will build his church. In spite of people's inability to stay committed, in spite of my ability at times or my inability to stay faithful to giving sacrificially, the Lord will build his church. So when you begin to put your eyes and fix your eyes upon the things of this world and become discouraged by the lack of commitment out of people or the the lack of whatever it is, you better fix your eyes back upon the only thing that will never change. And that is the gospel. I have to remind myself of that often. Being a church planter since 2009, um, going through all of the different seasons of you know, trying to purchase this building to make sure that our staff is taken care of, to, to, to preaching week in and week out. It's, it's all grace of God. I couldn't do it by myself. I couldn't do it on my own. And that is the reason that I give. And that is the reason why I want to be a more sacrificial giver in my life, is I want to see more people come to know the Lord Jesus Christ.